Welcome to the MOOC's course in Organic Chemical Technology. The title of today's lecture is Metallurgical Industries Part 1. This course is on inorganic chemical technology, then why are we studying about metallurgical industries? Uh, we need to have a kind of basic understanding about that one. There are a few important uh, connections between uh, chemical and then metallurgical industries. So, because of that reason we need to have a kind of basic information, basic knowledge about metallurgical industries as well. So, how can we put those connections? Let us say whatever the uh, lime, coke, oxygen, etc. that we produce in chemical plants, these are primarily used by the metallurgical industries, utilized by uh, metallurgical industries for uh, different purposes uh, for this melting process, production of iron steel, etc. for those purposes, these things are being utilized. So, we are going to see uh, a few of them anyway today's lecture itself, right. Another thing not only uh, they are uh, consumers of uh, major, uh, chemical products, metallurgical industry is not only the consumer of uh, several of chemical products, but also uh, some uh, it, it produces some of the chemicals which are uh, essential from chemical industries. Let us say uh, whatever ZNS smelting process etc. those things we have seen. So, where you know SO2 etc. has been produced also like you know zinc and copper smelting process we have seen that uh, H2SO4 uh, is a major uh, byproduct, byproduct we, though we call it uh, byproduct, but it produced in such a large quantity that uh, this H2SO4 in order to purify it that one you know uh, plants you know chemical plants are having separate uh, units to purify it and use it uh, for the production. So, these kind of things are also there that is not only they are consumer, but also they produce some kind kind of chemicals which are you know important uh, chemical plant productions as well, though they are byproducts for the metallurgical industries that is one of the reason. And then another reason is that you know so many of chemical engineering principles whatever are there which are you know on a continuous basis. So, these continuous operation principles uh, along with the process control etc., these are being uh, continuously or increasingly utilized by the metallurgical industries, so that high output of metallurgical industries can be uh, you know achieved by using these continuous chemical uh, continuous uh, approaches of chemical engineering principles, right. By using the continuous approaches of chem uh, chemical engineering principles, uh, one can uh, improve the uh, high output of a metallurgical industries as well, because uh, we are going to see like you know let us say iron or steel that making whatever we are doing mostly you know you know uh, they are fed as a batch and then con you know uh, required process has been uh, required process used to be done in general, right. So, in order to make, uh, make them continuous you know you need to have a uh, or you need to apply the principles of uh, chemical engineering so that to make metallurgical processes as well continuous. Because of such kind of connections it is essential to uh, learn or understand about a few basics of metallurgical industries as well though being chemical engineering graduates. So, with this background we start about the introduction about uh, metallurgical industries. Because of interrelation between chemical and metallurgical industries, discussion on metallurgical industries included in this course because of uh, you know following reasons. For example, metallurgical industries are major consumers of chemical industry products such as lime, coke, oxygen etc. So, this coke, lime are uh, used in making pig iron as well as the steel uh, for those purposes also they are used. Oxygen is anyway used in most of the uh, industrial uh, processes. So, metallurgical industry is also one of the consumer of uh, you know oxygen. So, that way there is a connection between metallurgical industry and then chemical industry. Further, metallurgical industries are uh, major producers of uh, chemical byproducts such as sulfur dioxide, sulfuric acid, etc. These byproducts such as sulfur dioxide, sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, etc., we get from this melting processes of uh, different types of uh, you know metals like uh, zinc uh, smelting, copper smelting, iron pyrite smelting process, etc. In, from those processes we get uh, these uh, gases SO2. Uh, and then you may also get sulfuric acid H2SO4 depending on the what what ore has been utilized for the you know uh, smelting of uh, certain kind of uh, uh, ferrous as well as non-ferrous metals. The non-ferrous metals such as aluminum, zinc, tin, lead, etc., are used to make alloys, castings, forgings, extrusions, wires, cables, pipes, etc. And all these markets are having one or other kind of connection with the chemical industries. Why? Because these are further used in infrastructure facilities development like power plants, automobiles, railways, 
telecommunications, chemical plants, agricultural sector and then domestic uses etc. So, because of this reason also we have a connection with the metallurgical industries as well. Because in most of these uh, sectors whether it is power plant sectors, automobiles or telecommunications, chemical plants or agriculture sector, uh, sector one or other way chemical engineering contribution is required. Further, chemical engineering techniques of process design and process control are being applied to conventional metallurgical operations to give high output continuous operations. So, because of such reason we are going to discuss about manufacture of iron, steel, copper, lead and zinc uh, in this particular week. So, let us start with iron and steel. Okay. What are the uh, ores that are available to make iron and steel? So, Primarily actually pig iron uh, is made or the pure iron is made right, so which is mostly 95 percent or even higher purity in iron content. That iron is usually if you have 100 percent pure iron, so that is useless because of uh, its softness as well as the high boiling point. So then what you do? You do alloying of this iron with carbon to get different types of steel as per your requirement. So in order to get the steel, first you have to get the iron and then that iron you get from the different types of iron ores. What are those iron ores? Hematite which is in the form of uh, Fe2O3, Magnetite which is in the form of Fe2O3, FeO which is nothing but Fe3O4, then Siderite which is nothing but FeCO3 and then Pyrites which is nothing but FeS. Actually these ores you know they are rich in these contents whatever the mentioned iron contents are there. So, these uh, ores are rich in these contents and then you do subsequent process to purify ores uh, and then those ores further you do the processing to get the iron followed by alloying to get different types of steel that is the process. Okay? So, let us say pyrites in the sense FES does not mean that it is having only FES, there may be some kind of other ingredients impurities may also be there. So, all those things has to be removed in the purification process. In principle hematite is used for iron and steel production in general, but however in some case magnetite is also used. India having extensive iron ore deposits, about 5 percent of world uh, reserves of iron deposits whatever are there, they are coming from India. So, such high resources or deposits of iron ores are present in India. Average iron content of Indian ores is about 60 percent which is also very high. Further, in addition to that one, Indian ores are low in phosphorus content. If the phosphorus content is less, then the ideally that is suited for melting to iron and steel actually. Actually from pig iron to steel we are making, you know, uh, by removing the impurities like phosphorus, etc., by oxidizing them, those kind of processes we are doing to get the pure iron and then doing the alloying to get the steel. Right? If the uh, phosphorus content itself is low in the ore, so then it will be easy to make steel from the iron ores uh, followed by iron and then steel by following that process. Okay? So, that is the advantage. So, Indian in, uh, metallurgical industry is having this advantage that you know uh, iron ores or iron ore deposits are very high and then average iron content of Indian ores is also uh, very high that is 60 percent and then most Indian ores are low in phosphorus uh, content which is a very uh, important advantage as well. So, now we start with iron ore purification or concentration of iron ore. Iron ore is produced through a combination of large mechanized mines in state owned uh, sector actually you know continuous uh, mechanized uh, mines are also there as well as the uh, small scale uh, semi mechanized uh, uh, sectors are also there which are owned by the private sectors. Majorly state owned government sector uh, mines are large machine mines. Okay? Whereas, smaller mines operated on a manual or semi manual basis is private owned sector. Okay? So, either of these two approaches are uh, followed uh, in order to do the mining of iron ores. Ore that is mined must be dried prior to processing to obtain iron because whatever the ores whether it is iron ore or any ore when you get uh, from the natural resources they are damp in nature. So, they have to be dried in order to do the further processing to get the uh, important uh, you know uh, mineral recovery etc. for that purpose. So, it has to be dried prior to the uh, further processing. And then when fines content of ore is high it must be sintered 
to give lumps. Why lumps? Because uh, we are soon we are going to see, let us say, uh, pig iron making uh, that we are going to see. So, there you are having a uh, blast furnace as, unkind, as a kind of unavoidable equipment. In fact, in this equipment only the iron is being produced. So, here in these furnaces what you do? You give uh, uh, you know preheated uh, air or oxygen which is preheated at 600 to 800 degrees centigrade and then how do you introduce into the furnace? You introduce as a blast, you uh, introduce into the furnace as a blast. So, when air at high temperature is introduced as a blast, so uh, if the ore is having the fines, so then that fines may be carried away along with the flue gases. Along with the flue gases, fines may be uh, carried away so, and then that is not going to be advantageous. If the fines are being carried away the, uh, without being reacted uh, within the furnace, so that is going to be loss. So, that is the reason in the, uh, the pig iron process or any other uh, process that we are going to discuss to get uh, uh, you know different types of metals, we avoid having fines, right. So, they are charged in, in general in uh, lumps, lumps of 2 to 5 centimeters etc. These lumps can be charged to blast furnace without excessive fines losses resulting from blowing powdered ore out of the blast furnace with the flue gases. This is the problem. So, that is the reason you try to avoid fines or keep fines as much less as possible if you cannot avoid and then give uh, the charge of uh, ore in the lumps forms. Okay? First step in steel manufacture is production of pig iron which occurs by the reduction of iron ore in a blast furnace. Then second step is production of iron carbon alloy which is known as steel in an open hearth furnace or in one of various types of converter vessels. Okay? So, in order to get the steel there are two steps. First you have to get the pig iron which is almost like pure iron more than 95 percent purity something like that. So, if it is pure, so iron will be having a soft nature and then melting temperature will also be high. So, that way it is not going to be useful uh, in order to make different types of structures out of the iron. So, for that reason iron usually alloyed um, by carbon to get the steel. So, steels are not like a pure iron, so they are iron carbon alloys kind of things. How much co uh, composition of iron carbon is there that depends on the what is the type of uh, steel whether SS316 or the different types of steel that you are going to produce accordingly the alloy composition has to be maintained. So, this alloying can be done in open hearth uh, furnace or in various types of uh, converter vessels as well. Then finally, high alloy steels may be made in electric furnaces as well. So, in order to get the steel first you have to produce the pig iron. So, that we are going to see and then after that we are going to uh, see the steel making in open hearth furnace process as well. So, let us start with production of pig iron. Raw materials for the production of pig iron are nothing but ore in lump form, lump form because of the reason that I mentioned. if uh, ore is there in the fines and then when it interacts with uh, preheated oxygen or preheated air which is coming at high temperature in the form of blast. So, then when the blast occurs in the furnace, so then these fines would be carried away along with the flue gases. So, in order to avoid the wastage of uh, fines, you know uh, you introduce the ore in lump form in the furnace to get the uh, pig iron. So, raw material that ore should be in the lump form not in the fines. Coke and limestone fluxes are required. Chemical reactions essentially whatever uh, hematite that is Fe2O3 rich uh, ore is there that reacts with the coke at high temperature something around 1700 degree centigrade like that to get iron and then carbon monoxide. This is the essential reaction, but you know furnace as we have seen in different types of glass makings and then cement makings also, you know furnace is having different temperature ranges. So, then different types of reactions goes on. So, here also uh, variety of reactions take place in different temperature zones of the blast furnaces as well. So, however, this is the primary reaction that should be you know uh, progressed at higher uh, rate. So, that to get uh, you know higher yield of iron. So, now this is the flow chart to get the uh, pig iron. right? So, what we have here? We have a blast furnace. This is nothing but the uh, you know uh, blast furnace. Uh, 
to this from the top iron ore limestone and then coke uh, mixture whatever is there in a proper uh, uh, weight fractions whatever the weights are required in order to get a required uh, in order to have a required yield and then uh, purity of uh, pig iron you know you have to measure the uh, uh, weights of these uh, ingredients iron ore coke uh, limestone etc and then introduce them from the top right from the bottom to this furnace what are you doing you are allowing air air which is preheated by using hot stoves which are nothing but uh, checker work uh, recuperator uh, recuperator stoves like kind of things which operate in alternatively so these hot uh, these stoves are used to preheat the air and that air is preheated to uh, approximately 600 to 850 uh, 800 degrees centigrade something like that and then introduced as a blast to the bottom of the uh, furnace so that whatever the charge that is coming charge is nothing but iron ore coke limestone etc that we react you know uh, with this air then what happens the coke that reacts with the hot air and then uh, liberates co and then also it liberates lot of the a lot of energy right so that energy would be utilized by the ore in order to melt and then uh, required separation of a uh, you know, you know, uh, pig iron and, and from the uh, impurities takes place, right? So now here, whatever the flue gases that are formed, they are taken from the top and then recirculated to hot or hot stoves, recuperative, uh, recuperative hot stoves, right? So that uh, they are nothing but like you know, uh, checker work, regenerative uh, regenerators that we have seen in the glass industries so similar kind of uh, uh, things are there here so uh, what is the purpose they are operated alternatively first let us say first uh, you know this is operated in order to preheat the air in the first cycle so then that um, reaction takes place and then flue gases would be at high temperature you know order of uh, 1200 degrees centigrade or even more right so those gases would be now second time would be passed through uh, another stove here the uh, whatever the sensible heat of uh, uh, flue gases uh, is there that would be utilized by the air that is coming in and then that would be uh, preheated and then uh, sent to the uh, furnace in the in the form of blast okay in the form of blast that is introduced so like this this uh, cycle continues in the next cycle what happens rather this stove is being used the first one would be used so like that alternatively they are utilized you know once it is uh, uh, if let us say if the uh, first stove is uh, providing the energy to preheat the air second one would be the receiving the energy from the uh, flue gases and then that energy would be uh, utilized by the air for the preheating in the second cycle. So further in the next time if the second one has given energy to preheat the uh, air the first one would be you know uh, you know receiving the energy from the flue gases and then that would be stored so, like that alternatively they are used so that you know energy efficiency would be high okay. So in this process in the furnace different temperature zones would be developed at the top low temperature would be there and then gradually as move down the temperature increases because of the uh, nature of the reaction and then in which direction reaction is taking place okay blast is coming from the bottom and then at this bottom coke is reacting with the high temperature air or oxygen to release co plus energy so then at the bottom where the reaction is occurring between coke and then uh, preheated air or oxygen so in that reason temperature would be going to be high right so because of the uh, reaction taking place whatever fe that is formed so that is collected as uh, from the bottom as and then taken into cars as pigs so uh, here the pig iron is uh, collected right if at all any slag etc is there that is also collected from the bottom itself and then this is done periodically by tapping periodically what you do tapping to get the molten iron from the bottom same like you know periodically you are tapping in glass industries to get the uh, molten glass etc the similar process is taking place here also okay so now uh, whatever the flue gases are there co etc they can also be collected from the bottom and then used for the 
you know, different processes of the plant because these flue gases produce in large quantities and lot of heat also being carried by these gases, so they can be utilized properly. So now this is basically about the process, so but what are the uh, problems associated with that one? So first one is that rather using air, what you do, you can use oxygen or oxygen enriched air so that to make sure that you know uh, combustion whatever the reaction uh, takes place between C and then uh, uh, that between coke and then oxygen uh, is higher one and then energy efficiency may be there. Right? Another option is that you know the, you are using coke, coke is also expensive and it is produced from the coal industry. So rather using coke if you can use oils you know uh, to, uh, to get the required energy for the combustion of the uh, you know uh, iron ore uh, whatever you have limestone etc that you are taken. So then that would also be energy efficient because oil is less expensive than the coke. Right, right, because you can use some kind of furnace oil, etc., those kind of things. So, if you can do that one, so it is going to be energy efficient as well, right. And then this structural, uh, you know, uh, design, design of uh, furnace, the structure itself is having very uh, big structures, uh, thousands of tons it may be having the, you know, weight. So, it has to be properly designed. Next, another one is that waste gases. How are you cleaning the waste gases? So, waste gas cleaning is a very essential process. So, these are a few engineering problems that one should be careful about. But most important is that cooling, cooling of this process because at the bottom see the temperature is around 1700 degrees centigrade something like that. At high temperature if you are not doing proper cooling what happens? The heat may be having the uh, negative impact on the process. Right? So, then what you have to do? Water cooling or water circulation at the bottom of the furnace should be provided so that required cooling should be there and then temperature should not shoot up. Okay? So, this is what uh, production of pig iron uh, by blast furnace approach. Okay? So, now uh, whatever we discussed here, the same thing we are going to discuss here in the text form as well. Process description. Charged materials of ore, coke and limestone in the proper proportions are weight. Such charges are introduced into the furnace by conveyors for reactions to take place. Layer of ore is intermixed with layers of coal and limestone as the furnace is charged. Simultaneously a hot air blast is introduced to the base of furnace at 600 to 800 degree centigrade from recuperator stoves as shown in the flow chart. These stoves are st steel vessels with checkerworks of refractory brick. So, what are these uh, checkerwork, uh, refractory bricks, etc., those things we have already discussed in detail in uh, 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 glass industries uh, uh, chapter when we were discussing, right? The same ones are being used here also. These stoves are alternatively heated by blast furnace of gas and used to preheat incoming air to the blast furnace using sensible heat in checker work as heat source. As the air reacts with coke generating CO and then heat okay? and as the iron oxide is reduced because of this heat generated because of the reaction between coke and then air, so that heat will uh, make the iron oxide to undergo reduction to produce molten iron which gathers at the base of furnace. This uh, molten iron is periodically tapped and molten pig iron run into cars from which in turn it is poured into long blocks called pigs. Okay? This is about the process. Now coming to the uh, major engineering problems, those things are also we have uh, discussed. So, what are they? Structure itself is considerable in size and may weigh up to 10,000 tons. So, careful structural design is necessary for the blast furnace, it is very essential. Right? Then furnace lining is subjected to intense heat so that a water cooling of walls must be used in the lower zone of furnace to counteract the destructive effects of heat. Why lower zones? Because in these lower zones areas only the temperature is very high in the order of 1700 degrees centigrade or even more. So, you do not want temperature to go beyond that one. So, for that purpose water cooling of walls 
of furnace is required especially in the lower zones. Cleaning of waste gas from blast furnaces before discharge to atmosphere is increasingly important to prevent adverse effects on vegetation and local population. So, this is very essential because you know the flue gases are primarily containing CO, uh, H2 and then CO2 these kind of gases are only there. Okay? Increased production may be achieved by uh, pressure operation data this has also been found by uh, different uh, researchers and being implemented in industries and then you know what pressure should you uh, allow that again depends on trade off between you know uh, temperature that you are supplying and then pressure that you are maintaining. Because if you have high temperature, high pressure then controlling the conditions will become very crucial and then if you are not controlling the uh, such high temperature and pressure uh, as per requirement then you know uh, explosions ex may take place and then which is not going to be uh, good for anyone. This pressure operation reduces dust carry over as well because dust carry over because these dust are usually nothing but they are having some kind of fine ores. So, that has to be reduced. So, that, so such reduction of uh, you know uh, fines loss is also found to be uh, beneficial when you uh, improve the uh, pressure of the operation. Further it permits high operating rates. What do you mean, mean by high operating rates? The heating rate and then uh, mass rate at which the feed is coming out and then mass rate at which periodically you are taking out the pig iron, uh, mass rate at which periodically you are taking out the slag from the bottom. So, all these you know uh, you can operate at higher rates also if you operate at higher pressure conditions. A reduced coke consumption is desirable is very much essential because if you have the coke then pollution is more. So, then in place of coke if you use the uh, oil then what happens not only 20 percent savings may be there, but also it reduces the pollution in the uh, waste gas. Okay? So, the cleaning of waste gas you know the load of cleaning of uh, waste gas would be reduced if you use the oil not only the savings that way also it is beneficial. Then improved furnace operating efficiency has been found by enriching the air blast with oxygen. If you use enriched oxygen or air with enriched oxygen then it has been found that you know furnace operating efficiency also uh, improved. So, these are the some of the important points one should be careful while operating uh, blast furnaces to get pig iron. Now, we discuss about production of steel. Raw materials obviously, the pig iron that we get from the blast furnace just we have discussed. So, that is the raw material actually production of steel is nothing but you know purifying the pig iron. Pig iron may be having some kind of impurities like phosphorus etcetera, carbon etcetera and then sulphur etcetera those things has to be removed. How do you remove? You do the oxidation of this pig iron so that those phosphorus, carbon and then sulphur etcetera they will be removed from the uh, pig iron uh, in the form of their oxides right? and then pure iron you will get that you can do the alloying with the carbon to get the steel that is the basic process. Okay? So, raw materials is pig iron. So, air or oxygen is required because you are doing oxidation of a pig iron to remove the impurities from the pig iron so that purified iron can be alloyed to get the steel. Okay? So, that, that means oxygen is essential uh, raw material here. Chemical reactions if you see primarily oxidation of impurities such as phosphorus to give oxides which end up in slag in open hearth furnaces or in converters. So, then uh, oxidation reactions only primarily taking place. However, carbon is oxidized to CO and CO2 and removed in the exit gases also. This is the other reaction that is occurring in the open hearth furnace process. So, this is the open hearth furnace process to get the steel. right? So, here we have a open hearth furnace as shown here. To this one pig iron from the blast furnace in molten form is taken. So, that molten form pig iron whatever is there that is taken here right? 
and then to this one air and flue gases are being supplied and then required temperature of 1200 or something like that is maintained here, right. So then what happens, whatever the impurities, phosphorus, sulphur, carbon, etc. that are present in the mol uh, this uh, molten pig iron, so they will be oxidized and then they will be released as the, uh, their oxides and then almost like pure iron whatever is there that you can uh, get from the bottom pe by periodically tapping it. Okay. So, this air flue gas locations uh, directions are given both sides so that it is uh, they are supplied alternatively. They, it can be done by a cycle kind of thing. So, for some few hours or few minutes it can be uh, uh, you know supplied from one direction and then collected from the other direction. After some time the direction may be uh, you know reversed that can be done. And then oxygen lances are provided at the top in order to improve this uh, oxidation process here newer kind of uh, furnaces are having these provisions. So, this air or oxygen whatever is there that can be blown over the surface or across the uh, melt can also they can be uh, supplied, right. So, now what happens when these reactions takes place this molten boils off and then when it boils off it releases the CO and then oxides of uh, sulphur, oxides of uh, uh, you know uh, phosphorus etc. if it are present they will be taken off. So, from bottom whatever the almost pure iron that you get obviously since it is under boiling condition there will be some gases. So, then a vacuum up would be applied to do the degassing. Once removing the gases by applying the vacuum proper alloying of this iron with the carbon is done in electric furnace to get required steel and then followed by the casting, shaping by rolling etc. as per the requirement. Same thing can also be done in different types of converters in which molten uh, pig iron is taken and then uh, across that one oxygen is supplied, across to that one or along the surface they are supplied so that the required oxidation reaction takes place and then you know uh, oxides of sulphur, phosphorus, etc. will be removed. And then once the uh, oxides of sulphur, phosphorus and then carbon, etc. are being removed, so the pure iron uh, would be uh, passed through a uh, vacuum degassing section to remove the gases if at all present followed by the alloying with the carbon in electric furnace, casting and then shaping by rolling as per the requirement of the consumer. This is the you know uh, process about uh, you know open heart furnace to get the steel. Okay. The same thing description if you see process description briefly steel making involves removal of undesirable elements like uh, carbon, sulphur, phosphorus from pig iron, such elements removed by oxidation reactions only. Then addition of necessary ingredients to make the type of steel required, what type of steel you required accordingly uh, you have to do the alloying. So, that alloying is done in electric furnaces in general because uh, pure iron is relatively useless as it is soft and has high melting point. So, then you do not want to have pure iron, rather pure iron you make alloying with carbon as per the requirements and then produce steel. Okay. Pure iron is used for magnetos, but structural and machine parts uh, require alloy steels only. Okay. Coming to the description of the open heart process, more than 50 percent of steel is made by open heart process. In this process several hundred tons of molten pig iron, steel scrap, limestone and iron ore are charged. Limestone reacts with phosphorus and iron ore furnishes the oxygen. As the reaction proceeds the molten mass boils off as result of uh, CO evolution. This reaction may take 4 to 20 hours. Oxygen lances inserted in the furnace roof are used in newer furnaces to supplement oxygen supply which is not uh, fulfilled by the air that has been uh, provided from the bottom uh, to the furnace. So, for that purpose this oxygen lances are being inserted at the top of the furnace roof. Further various types of converters are also used in which air and or oxygen are blown onto or through the molten iron are also used. So, either of them are possible. These converters require no external heating and permit much shorter process times. 
okay. Blowing oxygen through charge would result in excessive temperature rise. So, surface blowing of oxygen which may containing powdered lime flux is used in newer converters as well. So, that is about the steel making by open hearth furnace process. If you see it is engineering problem, if there is a nitrogen in the air what happens that will make the uh, uh, steel brittle. So, embrittlement of the steel may take place if the nitrogen is present in the air that is supplied uh, for the oxidation of pig iron to get the you know uh, pure iron right. So, so, you have to make sure that there should not be any nitrogen in the air or you know you should be you should able to remove it you know uh, before uh, getting into the uh, iron contents and then making it brittle. Minimizing of nitrogen content of steel produced by using oxygen steam mixtures in place of air is desirable because nitrogen content if present it causes embrittlement of steel product. Further mixing of oxygen with slag which can be improved by using a rotating horizontal or tilted converter is another uh, important uh, uh, advantage if you can uh, manage. This also permits the lining of converter to operate at a lower average temperature lengthening its life ok. Now, let us talk about sponge iron. What it is? Sponge iron is nothing but direct reduced iron. It is also known as direct reduced iron. Actually whatever the iron that we are getting, how are we getting? We are getting you know Fe2O3 is there and then you are trying to do the reduction and then get the iron that is what you are going to do. That is what you are trying to do whether it is pig iron and followed by steel making whatever it is right. But here the temperature is very high like 1700 degrees centigrade etcetera to melt the iron ore ok. So, that melting temperature such high melting temperature requirements can be reduced if you do the direct reduction of iron ore. So, when you do such direct reduction of iron ore to get the iron then the product whatever you get is known as the sponge iron which is also having iron content about 92, 93, 94 percent similar like pig iron ok. So, it is produced by direct reduction of iron ore into iron by reducing gas CO or H2 or elemental carbon obtained or achieved from the natural gas or uh, coal. So, whether are you using gas CO or H2 or both in order to do the reduction of uh, iron ore or whether are you using elemental carbon to do the uh, required reduction of uh, iron uh, ore. So, this uh, DRA process can be gas based or coal based ok. Such processes ore is taken in solid form as pellets or concentrates or furnace dust etcetera. They are not you know uh, melted completely to do the required you know uh, reduction of the iron ore ok. Ore converted to sponge iron without melting the ore that is you operate at temperature below 1200 degrees centigrade. What are the reactions that occur in this process? Let us say hematite if you uh, take and then react with CO or H2 then you get uh, uh, magnetite Fe3O4 plus CO2 or H2O. If you are using CO then you get CO2, if you are using H2 then you get H2O. Similarly, in the subsequent step this Fe3O4 that is uh, magnetite that reacts with CO or H2 to give ferrous oxide. If you are using CO as a uh, reduction agent then you get CO2, if you are using hydrogen as reduction agent then you get water. This ferrous oxide would further be reduced to iron by using CO or H2. If you are again using CO then CO2 you get, uh, if you are using H2 then you will get H2O right. So, this iron whatever is there, so that we call it DRI or sponge iron. So, what is the point of using this one? The use of blast furnace, actually blast furnace though it looks very uh, simple process in the flow chart, but operation wise you see you are reacting uh, coke with oxygen which is preheated to uh, 600 to 800 degrees centigrade and then this oxygen or air you are 
introducing into the furnace as a blast. So, when it enters in the um, uh, furnace at high temperature as a blast, so then you know a kind of explosion takes place in the furnace. So, then you have to properly control the conditions. So, that is very uh, that is a very uh, danger and also whatever the uh, molten iron or slag that is uh, forming at the base of the furnace that also be periodically continuously has to be removed otherwise process cannot be continuous, right. So, such kind of problems would be there in the blast furnace that is used to get uh, pig iron. So, that requirement of such uh, uh, blast furnace would be avoided if you do this direct reduction of iron ore to get this sponge iron. But what are the problems then if you have this sponge iron by this process? The problem is that it may be having some uh, siliceous uh, gang etc. So, which is which has to be removed while making the steel that is the only disadvantage otherwise sponge iron is a very good and an efficient and newer technology. It is energy efficient process commonly made into steel using electric furnaces so that to take advantage of heat produced by DRI process. Main advantage of this process is to avoid difficulties of conventional blast furnaces, right. This uh, direct reduced iron whatever is there that is having 90 to 94 percent total iron which is on par with the uh, pig iron not much less. However, it has a disadvantage that it is susceptible to oxidation and rusting if you do not protect properly. So, because of uh, its susceptibility to oxidation and rusting, if it is immediately processed to make uh, steel, quickly processed to make steel in general, okay. Other disadvantage that it contains some siliceous uh, gang unlike uh, blast furnace pure iron. So, this gang need to be removed while steel making. So, that is all about the uh, production of uh, iron and steel by different processes. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss about the production of different types of uh, non-ferrous metals. The references for today's lecture are provided here. The first one is Outlines of Chemical Technology by uh, Dryden which is edited and revised by Gopal Rao and Marshall, third edition. Then Chemical Process Industries by Austin and Shreve, fifth edition. Then Encyclopedia of Chemical Technology, Kirk and Atmar, and then Unit Processes in Organic Synthesis by Grogins. However, the entire lecture notes that has been presented uh, in today's lecture is prepared from this reference book, Dryden, that is Outlines of Chemical Technology. Thank you. Mm -hmm.